With just one day to go until the fate of Exeter's dry ski slope is decided, members of Exeter's dry ski slope have criticized a closure impact assessment as being hurried and poorly assembled. Concerns have also been raised that it has been alleged Council Leader Pete Edwards has instigated the party whip to ensure members of the party attend and vote as the party leadership desires. Campaigners are fighting to retain Exeter Ski Club on land behind the city's closed sports centre Clifton Hill after the council announced plans to sell the site, earmarked for potential new homes, as one whole site. However, at a meeting of Exeter City Council's Place Scrutiny Committee earlier this month, councillors voted to recommend to the council's executive to exclude the ski slope from the land that would be put up for sale. Volunteers at Exeter Ski Club Image, Anita Merritt, tomorrow, February 26, it will be debated by full council when a further vote will be made and the decision will be given a final sign-off. The 50-year-old ski club is asking city councillors to consider the economic and social arguments, and not just the financial implications. It will be presenting two petitions, signed by more than 2,000 people, calling for the ski club site not to be sold off. Ski club member Valerie Jarrett has criticized the council for its equality impact assessment which was presented to the council's executive on February 12, and a lack of consultation with the ski club among other issues. She said, the lack of consultation with the ski club in the period leading up to this point has led to serious failures to explore better outcomes for Exeter as a whole. We ask all the councillors to make the decision as people with individual minds and consciences and vote to save our 30-meter wide piece of land from development. We have been just been informed by a county councillor that CLLR Edwards has instigated the party whip, making sure we can't win and all the Labour councillors can't even abstain, so much for the democratic process. The Ski Club and Adaptive Ski Club were not consulted or visited in preparation of any council statements or strategies relating to this idea, which the council still seem to be pushing forward even though they have been given lots of information in the last few days. The council has not made publicly available the site valuation report but have said that by not selling the green space and the ski slope the sale value would be reduced by £4 million, 44%, but they have also said that they propose to sell the green space, which is 10% of the site size, but that will then be returned to the city after development, as is usual in housing developments within the Exeter local plan. It means this will cost them nothing. No costings have been given for just the retention of the ski slope which represents about 8% of the site, so you could say that the decision of the executive to sell the site was made on false information. The club does not believe the council are going to find another piece of land and give them any financial help to move and set up the new site. A letter from Joe Yelland, director, to one of our adaptive members states, We are aware that the club does not believe that the needs of disabled skiers can be met on anything other than a traditional dry ski slope. We think this is likely to be a too expensive proposition to undertake, expressing the club's desire to work with a potential developers, Valerie added, the club would be happy to work with a developer to significantly reduce the burden on them during the development phase, including offering temporary closure of the slope if required. They could virtually eliminate any amenity impacts on surrounding properties through the relocation of car parking to within the ski slope site, changes to ski slope lighting, and the introduction of screening for visual. And any noise intrusion, referring the council's equality impact assessment, she continued, it was a hurriedly assembled and poorly researched report and the executive should not have based any reliance on it. It concludes the impact of the potential closure of the ski slope on people with disabilities and people with low incomes would be high, but are incorrect in saying that this could be mitigated to low through the council provision of a ski simulator at the Exeter Arena site. Research into this type of facility shows it would be completely unusable by disabled users and as there is no recognized qualification for teaching on such equipment making it uninsurable. Then there is the fact a maximum of three students can use the machine at one time. 
The average cost for two hours of skiing, based on other UK facilities, is £160 adults and £140 juniors. For the same slope time at Exeter, a child would pay £11 and an adult non-member £18. This would make it cost and time prohibited to schools and other group users as well as the ski club's Saturday Kids Club which has on average 35 users. Valerie says the loss of the ski club would also impact on the future success of its members, including an adaptive club member who has been selected for the GB team at the Deaf Olympics. Concerns have also been raised about the longevity of a ski simulator. The future of Exeter's dry ski slope is in doubt, image, Anita Merritt, Valerie said, several simulator businesses that have been set up in major cities have had to close due to huge financial losses. These high costs would represent an insurmountable barrier to participation by most people in groups in this area. As well as producing a huge financial loss to the council, the vote will take place at the Guildhall, Exeter, on February 26, when the council meets at 6 p.m. Exeter City Council and CLLR Edwards declined to comment. To sign the change.org petition click here to sign the Exeter City Council a petition click here.